Hi everyone, this is Nightfighter22 here. I hope you guys are all well. And today I'm going to go ahead and play uh, some 3 minute speed chess, as you can see. So basically, you know, speed chess is pretty fun, but what usually tends to happen in these games is time becomes of the essence, as you could say, and um, it always ends up being pretty fast at the end. And this opponent is a fast mover. Okay, hopefully we can sort this out by getting the knight off and then supporting it with an f-pawn. Because we don't really want this pawn to be hanging there. Hmm. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, right. We haven't really got the time to think that much at the moment. Let's just play this. Pin down that knight. Knight takes, knight takes. Ah, clever. He won the pawn there. And knight takes there. Um, right. Not quite the rook. I can't get the rook. That's annoying. C2. Sorry, the C6 square is protected. Although maybe. That's an interesting idea. If he plays knight back there. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. Um, and then get into... Uh, how do we take advantage of this? Plus, plus pay d7 and pin down that... Rook to d7 will pin down that knight completely. And this knight feels a bit locked down at the moment. Oh gosh, we're down on time. The chess attacker eats 1297. I don't know what flag that is. Bulgaria. Bulgaria. Don't see many Bulgarian people on the chess site. What did he trade off? He traded off the knight. Interesting. Is that just a delay move? Because these diagonals just become ever so weaker now. It's knights versus bishops, and we have a very open board. Although, as I said, the time, um, I'm really sort of, it's more of an issue in this game. Uh, because it's only three minute speed chess. Right, okay, what's he going to do? He, both his knights are pinned. So what's he done? Is he just accepted that this one's going to go? But then there's an uh, then there's an annoyance on this one. As well, at the same time. So he's got to move his queen. And then takes here, and the rook is trapped. Wow. And then. Hmm, hang on. Oh, let's take that rook. And then... Uh, right, we need to get this other rook in. Double on the default. It's this f7 problem. i tell you what we could do, actually. We could play rook takes pawn. And then check down there. Like this. Check. And then takes here. What I want to do now is I want to get rook onto d8. Sorry, d7. Yeah, okay, you saw that. There should be an easy mating pattern from here. Oh, uh, I'm not always the best at finding these mating patterns. But nonetheless, you always have to have something to work on in chess. Oh, we've got to be careful. Bishops on f1 for this back rank mate, if it ever happens. But we do have to be careful with that. Okay, 55 seconds. Let's go. We can checkmate him. Easy. Easy we can checkmate him. Yes. He has to take here. Yeah. Easy. He's going to try and win on time, obviously. Because if he still has a pawn, then... Might as well. Okay, how are we going to checkmate him? Corner him. That's what you do. I remember now. From all those years of not playing chess. From all those years since three days ago of not playing chess. Yes, here we go. Cornered him. Cornered him. In that corner. Oh, there we go. There's a mate. So, yeah, that was um, a pretty interesting chess game. He actually offered me a rematch. 
Um, which I'm not going to take, but I'll say thanks for the game. Because, you know, it's always nice when um, someone offers you a rematch. I'll tell him I'm making a video. Oh. That's a bit shit. He just said run, run. Because he, he probably thought, you know, I'm going to that thing of leave one alone. But I'd rather just have one, um, one chess match in the video. Okay, so what we've got here is he fianchettes both of his bishops. It's interesting, actually. He fianchettes both of his bishops. And you sort of think in this position it's easy for me to play c fits. But I have to be careful about both of these diagonals. For example, not moving the b or the g pawns too early. Not that you usually do move these two pawns unless you're fianchettoing. Um, but I never went for the tactic of having this sort of battle of who can control the file. This bishop's already out here. e6 castles knight to e7 I don't think this is as strong as uh, knight up to e6 sorry knight up to f6 if you play knight f6 I could, I could possibly play e5 though and that really sort of blocks off the purpose of this bishop so I guess that's why I didn't do that I play e5 anyway and this bishop's pretty it's not looking pretty you can see the dark squares are weakened with moves like bishop to g5 d6 trying to trade stuff off rook e1 why would I want to trade stuff off D65. I think at this point I have a little bit of trouble. What I ultimately wanted to do is I wanted to get the pawn onto F4, um, but he made that quite hard for me because by attacking the pawn with knight to D7, and there's a double attack from knight and the bishop. So if I move the defender away, and he could just take. I suppose I could play F4, but then that blocks in the bishop. So instead I play bishop out to G5, and then he decides to trade off. Now I actually think that that was the weakness point in the game. I don't really know what he was thinking, maybe removing the defender of this bishop, but it's not being attacked. So I'm not sure really why he um, traded that off, because his light squares now are the ones that are really weakened. Knight takes e5, and then bishop to g5. So even though I would lost the pawn in this position, I think I gained a better position. Um, having not found that bishop to g5 move, I think I would have been in a worse position. Uh, but bishop to g5 really just takes advantage of the light squares and it puts him in check as well so he's thinking oh well, I'm attacking his queen but then he just gets in check so when knight comes back to d7 is there anything better he could do in this position obviously knight c6 isn't very good if he played knight c6 and takes and takes and check and you know it's not looking good he loses a piece basically knight d7 and now rook to d1 this is a very nice pin because there's effectively nothing he can do to save a knight. Because if he moves a knight, the queen falls. Can he put any other defenders on? No. No other defenders he can put on. Not that I'm seeing, anyway. There's no other way he can defend that knight. So, he trades off this one now. I'm thinking this really weakens your, uh, your light squares, mate. And then he castles. But if you notice in this position, the light squares are weak and the dark squares are weak. And to be honest, after these, after these pins... Just win a lot of material, and I just got to find out a way to win the queen. This is always the bit where I sort of I think I don't try my hardest after, especially after this move. I could focus more on these endgame strategies, but because I had you know almost half over half a minute on my clock, I was just thinking oh I can mess him around the board a bit until he gets checkmated, which was there. But I'm sure Grandmaster would um, do it very quickly. So if you're trying to learn from me, look at my openings and middle game. Don't so much look at my endgame strategies. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that video, everybody. I thought it was a pretty good match of live speed chess, purely because I've won. <laughs> and um, I hope you guys good luck with your chess, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.